Ephesians chapter 4. Or verse 28. God changed my sermon direction this afternoon. I thought I was preaching on one thing and God just... Whew, right hand turn. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 28. I'm going to read that one verse right now. Of course, we'll look at other verses later throughout the message. I'm going to start to say Ephesians 4, 28. Kung nana, say amen. Amen. Tanaman ito, paleo, para sa pagbasa, sa Diyos. My voice is a little bit weak. Ephesians 4, 28. English una, sa ikaduha. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Siya nga nangawat ayaw na papangawata. Apan, hinoon, tugote siya nga maghago, nga magabuha, pinaagi sa iyang mga kamot, sa butang nga maayo. Aron nga siya, adunay, ikahatag nga to kaniya, nga nagakinahanglan. Hey guys, welcome. Good morning. That's a JV. Nakahigala diya. Oh, my man. My man. So my message comes from verse 28. Well, obviously, at the last line of verse 28. Have to give. Have to give. It's translated here, Aduna Ikahatag. I think you could also possibly translate it as Magbaton Aron Makahatag. I think you could also translate it that way. And that's the way I want to look at it tonight. Have to give. Magbaton aron makahatag. Magampanata? Dayong kumu makalingko. Dali Father, thank you for meeting with us already tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the good spirit among our people. Thank you, Lord, for the growth of our church members. Now, Lord, I pray, God, you bless the service right now. I pray, Lord, you hold the rain off. It looked like the rain was coming. I pray, Lord, you hold it off until after the service so we don't get leaks inside, distracting from the message tonight. Holy Spirit of God, please fill me with your power. Use me, dear God. Help me to say exactly what's needed. Work in our hearts, Lord, through this very practical message. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to ask you a question tonight. How many of you how many of you desire God's blessing Financially on your life. My hands up on that. Nagtingwa ko sa blessings sa Joseph financial. Kung nagtingwa ka sa blessings sa Joseph financial, ita si mong kamot. I think we all do. Kitang tanan nagtingwa sa financial blessings sa Joseph sa tong kinabuhi. I have another question. Have you ever prayed and asked God to bless you financially? I have many times. I've prayed and asked. So tonight I want to ask a very simple question. Watch now. Simply kaya ang akong pangatana karong hapon. Why? That's called a rhetorical question. Please don't answer. Why? Why do we, or why do I, want God to bless me financially? And I want you to ask yourself that question right now. The outside of lugar. Pumatana sa mong kaugalingon. Ngano man, ganahan ko sa mga blessings sa Diyos o financial sa akong kinabuhi. Why do I want God's financial blessings on my life? Why? Let's, or ask yourself this way. What is a financial blessing? That's when God gives you money. Right? Financial blessing sounds much nicer than give me money. 
right? So many kids run up to me on the street, give me money. Diva, give me money. And then I look at them and say, oh, ganang kamo hapin ako, korta tawa to na ko. Pag nalibog na sila, pasin na sayo ko sa English, wash na kasabot. Why do I want, ask yourself this question, why do I want God to bless me financially? Why do I want God to give me more money? Because that's what a financial, let's just call it what it is, that's what a financial blessing is. Now, that's not the only kind of blessing God can give us, but that is what a financial blessing is. Quarta. You know about? Okay. So ask yourself the question. And be honest with yourself as you ask yourself the question. Answer it to yourself. Why do you want more money? Well, well, to take care of uh, take care of our needs. Okay, I understand that. That's good. But let me ask you a question. If someone gave you a million pesos today, would you be excited? Siempre. Kung kung tao mo at ni mo one million pesos karon malipay na ka. Kita malip. Come on, come on. Kita malipay kung matanga. Okay, now listen. Huh? Brilliant, brother Julius. Can I have two million? Three, one million, ra. <laughs> no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you need a million pesos? No. You do, Aldwin. Oh, all right. Well, well you might, well, you might not want to say that. Yeah, you don't know where this message is going, but uh, oh, you're gonna give it for the land fund. What a blessing. Now listen. Forgot where I was going. Now, wait a minute. Why do we want financial blessings? So God will take care of our needs, right? Oh, we don't need a million pesos, so why do we want that? Hmm. If you don't have a million pesos, you'll be just fine. You know what? Why do we get excited? Why do we, because if we get excited, because we want it, right? Hmm. Look with me at our text verse again, Ephesians 4.28. Ephesians 4.28. Let him that stole, steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to what? Look at the verse. That he may have to what? Hmm. To him that needeth. Siya nga nangawat ayaw na pagpangawata. Apan hinoon tugot siya nga maghago nga magabuha pinagi. I'm sorry, maghago nga magabuha pinagi sa yung mga kamot. Sabuta nga maayo. Aron nga siya adunay ikahatag. Or we could say aron nga siya magbaton. Aron Makahatag. Nga to kaniya nga naga kinahanglan. If we were the ones writing the Bible, which thankfully we're not. Pero kung kita ang naga sulat sa Biblia, kinik nga verse lahi kaayo. If humans, fleshly, selfish, natural humans, wrote this verse, it'd be a very different verse. If we were to write this, some Christians would say, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have, why? To take care of the needs of his family. Well, that's, that's a good thing, I guess. Others might say that he may have to save. I don't make a save, I don't make a digum. But let's just be honest. Most of us, if we wrote this verse, we would write it this way. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to spend it all. That he may have to spend. If we are honest with ourselves tonight, if we are honest, 
If we are honest with ourselves, most of us, listen now, most of us desire money so we can spend it on ourselves. Now, maybe not all, but most of us. On ourselves and on our families. Is that not the biggest reason we desire God's financial blessings? Dili ba ka na ang pinakadakong rasa na kita nagtingwa sa mga blessing of financial sa Diyos? The honest truth is most of us desire God's blessing so that we can spend it on ourselves. Aron kita makagasto alang sa atong kawalingon. And that may, now listen very carefully right here, that may be the very reason God does not bless us financially. Turn with me to James chapter 4, verse 3. Karong gabi ako mga ayo, nga dalit ka masuko na ko. Kung ikaw ka na masuko na ko, hula ang tod sa katapusan sa mensahe. Sige? Pero dalit sa sinugdanan. Hula ang tod sa nagadoon ka sa tanan. James chapter 4, verse 3, look at it. Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. The word amiss means sayop. That ye may consume it upon your lusts. Kamu nang ayo o wala nakadawa tungod kay sayop ang inyong pagpangayo aron kamu mo usik usik ni ini sa inyong mga kaibo. God is teaching very clearly right here. Sometimes He withholds blessings from our lives because we are asking for selfish reasons. Now let's look at our text first again. Go back to Ephesians 4.28 again. Ephesians 4.28 again. <clears throat> let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Aron nga siya aduna ikahatag, or aron nga siya makabaton, aron makahatag, I think one of the biggest reasons that we don't receive the blessings we desire is because we have a fundamental difference of opinion regarding the purpose of having money. Tungo na tay dakong kalihinan sa atong hunuhuna kabayan sa korta, ang hunuhuna sa Diyos kabayan sa korta. How do I do? Is that clear enough in the sign? God says, go work. Why, God? So you can have money. Why, God? So you can have money to give to others when they need it. The world says, go work. Why? So you can have money. Why? So you can buy all the things, go all the places, and do all the things you want to do. There is a huge difference in the thinking of God about money and the thinking of the world about money. Many Christians carry the worldly thinking from their old life into their new life. Dagang Christians magdala sa ilang kalibutan hong na hunuhun na kabayan sa korta magdala sila ana uban kanila sa ilang bagong kinabuhi diak ni Kristo. They still think, watch, they still think that God gives us money so we can spend it. 
And that worldly philosophy causes us problems in every area of our lives. Every single area. Ang hunuhuna, nakwakwaka, nga naman, gasto na. Kanal nga hunuhuna, maghinu mga problema sa tanan area sa kinabuhi. I said tanan. Every area that you have problems in your life, it can be affected by that kind of thinking. Turn with me to Proverbs. I want to show you a verse. Proverbs 21, verse 20. Proverbs 21, verse 20. Are you wishing you stayed home tonight? If I'd known Pastor Mike was going to preach about money, I'd have stayed home. If I'd known I was going to preach about money, I'd have stayed home. I didn't know. Proverbs 21, verse 20. Kung nana, say amen. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. Look at the next sentence. But a foolish man spendeth it up. Isaiah. Adunay bahande nga pagat tinguhaon uglana dihat sa pinoy anan sa maalamon. Apan, ang uskabuangon nga tao nagawaldas. What is nagawaldas? Hey, do you know what I'm going Huh? Huh? Usik? Nagawaldas paghurot ni ini. Now you listen to what I'm about to say right here and don't, don't get upset, don't get mad. I'm going to tell you the truth. One of the biggest reasons Christians struggle in so many areas comes back to this problem right here. Every time God gives us money, we spend it all. Matag panahon ang Diyos mahatag na tong korta kita mo gasto sa tanan. Dalik portante tagpila ang korta. It doesn't matter if it's 20 pesos, 100 pesos, or 10,000 pesos. When God gives us money, we spend it all. And then we have a doctor's bill and we have no money for the doctor's bill and so life's all of a sudden very stressful. Are you listening? Then we have a little problem with our motorcycle. Maybe uh, and I don't have a hundred pesos to buy a new chain because I spent all the money God blessed me with last time. God says, I knew the chain was going to break. So I gave you money in advance. I when you have to give me a quarter daan, but I count the cost of the quarter for the cadena. Tito do que o que é? Ouch! Now I love the ukai ukai, not because I like shopping, but because I like cheap. Na lipay ko kung barato. I'm not against the ukai ukai. If you buy your clothes from Lee Plaza, you're retarded. Go to the ukai ukai. But our problem is, we spend everything we hit, get. We don't save anything. We don't look for opportunities to help someone else. We spend it all on ourselves and on our families. And then the emergency comes and we have nothing. Ang tao masakit, we're like, warta para sa tambal. And God says, I already blessed you last week. What did you do with that money? Oh, snacks na lang. Told you that tonight's gonna be practical. God gives us money and we spend every single peso, and God calls that foolish. Ang Dios nagtawagana buangon. Did you hear it? Apaan ang usika buangon ng tao nagawalas paghuro ni ini. So God gives us money, we spend everything, every time, and then we struggle financially. And you listen to me, financial problems cause damage in every area of life. Ang problema o financial makahimo sa problema sa tanan Latin area. Number one, financial problems cause stress. The number one cause of stress in the Pitan is money problems and relationship problems. Guess what? Most relationship problems come from money problems. 
Why do we fight? Because he has the money and I want it and he won't share it. Right? And by the way, that's the reason we spend it right away, isn't it? Because we don't want the family to ask for it. Kung pamilya ka balo na kay kwarta sila mga ayo. So ikaw magdiretso sa ukay ukay aron magasto sa dalipis pa sila magpwede mga tana, mga ayo. Diba? Diba? Financial problems cause stress. Stress causes health problems. Stress causes relationship problems. And stress pushes you toward your old sinful habits. Kung ma stress ka, Stress, listen, stress damages your body. I don't care what any doctors say, ulcers are related to stress. They are. They are. Heart problems can, are often related to stress. One of the most common heart tests in America is called a stress test. Health problems often are related to stress. And where is the biggest cause of stress? Money problems. And where, why do we have so many money problems? Because we spend everything God gives us. If you have five pesos in your pocket, you can't bear it till you spend it. Oh. He could not make a pretty Piatos, whatever you call it, Elvin. Don't, don't look at me that way. Elvin's giving me this judgmental look. You don't know how to say the word piatos, Pastor Mike. Stress. Finance, pro financial problems cause stress. Stress causes health problems. Stress causes relationship problems. When you're stressed, you say things you don't mean. When you're stressed, you do things you never plan to do. You hurt people you love when you're stressed. And financial problems cause big stress, don't they? Stress pushes you towards your old sinful habits. Kung mas stress ka, kanang panahon, kanang ka maginom. You know what? Kung mas stress ka, kanang panahon, kanang ka manigalilyo. Kanang ka magsugal. Nga naman, na stress. Hey, kung ma stress ka, kanang panahon, ganang ka maglanta sa uh, dautang butang sa TV. Maminaw sa kalibutan, kalibutan hong nga music. Tungod na stress ka. Right? Come on. When you get stressed, that's when you adults want to go back to your old 90s music. Right? Come on now. See, Pastor Mike, we don't like the 90s. We like the 80s. Whatever. When a young person gets stressed, that's when you want to listen to your K-pop and do your little dance thing. Financial problems cause stress and stress damages everything. But that's not all. Financial problems cause marriage problems. Now, I know that's part of relationships, but it deserves its own point. Financial problems are probably the number one cause of, of marriage problems in the Pitan. Much bigger than alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, Gambling or gambling, all of those are connected to finances. But the financial stress causes huge marriage problems. Why do husbands. You know what? And we. Come on now. Financial problems cause stress, marriage problems, but it also limits our ability to serve God. Dagang tao, ganahan mahimong faithful sa simbahan, pero dali pwede, tungo nagbasug sila ang financial, kinahang lang jod magtrabaho. Right? Many people would like to go soul winning, but they feel like they don't, they just can't, tungo type kayo ang schedule, tungo kinahang lang korta, so they have to work. So financial struggles limits our ability to serve God, doesn't it? I'm not preaching against financial struggles. We all have them. But if you are still struggling financially the same way you are tonight, if it's still the same in 10 years, you have a major spending problem. Not only that, 
Many good people want to give more money to the land fund or give more money to missions, but they can't because their money is just, I lost the word, apiki, apiki jun, taikai on orta. What I'm showing you here is financial problems cause so much damage in so many areas and one of the biggest causes of financial problems is uncontrolled spending. Dilita makakontrola sa atong kawalingon paggasto. We don't want to say no. Turn to Proverbs 21, 17. Are you still in Proverbs 21? Look back three verses. <clears throat> Proverbs 21, 17. Watch what it says. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. Shang and Nagahi Gugma o Kahilayan Mahimo na Uzka Kabos na Tao. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. Shang and Nagahi Gugma Sabino o Glana de Le. God says, if you want to know if you're going to be poor or not, it's really easy. Do you love pleasure and do you love comfort? Wine and oil is a picture of the comfort, luxurious life. Why does God say that man will be poor? Watch. Because as soon as he gets paid, he goes and spends it all for pleasure. Pleasure. And then he works the whole next week or the next two weeks so he can have two or three hours of pleasure after he gets paid. He will always be poor because he always spends everything he gets. Turn to Luke. Turn to me to Luke chapter fifteen, verse fourteen. Luke chapter fifteen, verse fourteen. Ayamo suko karo, and it's just going to get worse. I just wait. Luke 15, 14. And when he had spent all, spent how much? There arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Kawalat on means kulang. Like wala, wala is a root. You know the story. This is the prodigal son. When did he begin to be in want? After he spent all. Did you see that? Human yashan nagasto sa tanan. Now, I'm going to make a statement right here that a lot of people will disagree with on the social level, but I don't care. It agrees with the Bible. The number one cause of poverty in the Philippines is not the economy. It is not low wages. It is not corruption in the government. The number one cause of poverty in the Philippines is uncontrolled spending. Because not everybody in the Philippines is poor. You know what? Now don't misunderstand me. It's not wrong to be poor. And I'm not criticizing somebody for being poor. But I'm showing you our thinking is wrong about money. And if we don't change it, we stay poor. It is unnecessary. I must say that in Messiah because it's good. Ang pinagdadakong rason ng naik 
pagka pobre, pagka kabos na dinhi sa Pilipinas, dali ang economy, dali ang gamay ng mga sweldo, dali ang corruption dito sa government. Ang pinagadakong hinungdan sa ka pagka pobre sa Pilipinas, mao ang ha, how do I say that? Dali ang control ng gasto. Wala ang control ng gasto. Mga gasto, mga dali ang control na to, Something like that. Uncontrolled spending. AJ system. Now, now look at me and listen for a minute, okay? Don't get mad at your pastor for telling you the truth. You say, you're an American. Not all Americans have money. Come visit with me. You ought to see some of the places they live. Oh yeah, it's not a bamboo house, but I wouldn't want to live in it. But Pastor Mike, my boss doesn't pay me enough. I'm not going to boss and Mike, I don't swill do. Curry Putman Shaw. Oh, hold on. I have a question. Did your boss force you to spend two or three hundred pesos on snacks last week? Ouch. Ang yung bossing nagpugos ni mong na naggasto two to three hundred pesos sa mga snacks the last week. Say, Pastor Mike, I don't spend two to three hundred pesos on snacks. I'll bet you do. You just don't keep a budget, so you don't know. You go to the store three times a day, spend 20, 25 pesos, count that up. That's a lot of money. 20 times 3, that's 60. 60 times 7, that's 420 pesos in one week. Snacks na lang. Kamayans will look na mo. No, dako ang gasto ni mo sa mga butanga, daliki kinanglan. Did your boss force you to spend all your extra money at the ukay ukay? Did your boss force you to buy the new shoes that were on sale? Ipulgos kanya? Did your boss force you to go to the latest event at Gloria or wherever else? Did he make you do it? No. But then somebody gets sick. Pastor Mike, cool lang ang kwarto para sa tambal. Isn't this a popular fun message tonight? <laughs> Aren't you glad you came to church? Yeah. Aren't you glad your pastor loves you enough to tell you the truth? Yeah. Turn to the first Timothy chapter six, verse eight. Do you know what our problem is? We convince ourselves that we need things that we don't really need. Kita magpatos atong kaugalingo ang ikinanglan na to ang mga butang at dali kikinanglan. But I need it. Why? Well, my neighbor has it. That's not doesn't mean you need it. Akong akong silingan na na kana. Well, I love it na. First Timothy six eight. And having food and raiment. Let us be there with content. Ug sa nakabaton, ug pagkaon, ug sapot, kita pinaagi ni ini, magkatento. I think there's one other thing we could add to this list. That's housing. You need a place to sleep at night. Though Jesus didn't even have that. But you need food, right? You need a house. You need clothes, Right? So yes, you need new clothes. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you need new clothes every month? Or every week? I'm just going to go ahead and say something. Because when, when the pastor, the American pastor, preaches about money, the devil always comes and whispers in the Filipino's ear, he doesn't understand he's an American. Right? What's that? What's that? What's that? Okay. Okay. I have a challenge for you. You bring all your clothes to church and I'll bring all my clothes to church and we'll see who has more clothes. I promise you, you do. Every person in this room. I looked in my closet yesterday just to see. I use this much space in the closet for all of my outer clothing. 
but I only wear this many. The rest is like old work shirts and stuff like that. I don't wear very much. But the clothes that I wear regularly is about that wide. Maybe a little bigger. So maybe about that. That's my closet. Look, you are looking at half of my shoes. How many shoes do you have, Pastor Mike? Four. These two and two others. Fortunately, they match. I do have some other shoes, but they're worn out. I can't wear them anymore. They hurt. And I have the shoes Brother Rice gave me, and I don't wear them because they hurt. I will give them... I don't think you want my shoes, Mama. <laughs> somebody. Oh, somebody else. I might do that. I'm kind of waiting till these die, and then I'm going to try them again, and if they still hurt, I'll give them away. But watch. Have you ever noticed how ugly Pastor Mike's shoes are? Have you ever noticed that when I'm preaching? Pastor Mike, your shoes are stupid. I, I know. But listen. We get this idea, I need clothes. Yes. But you need this many clothes. Do you need new clothes every week, every month? But Pastor Mike, it's on sale. Can I wala a sales. Do you know why they have sales? Because they need your money. Not because you need their clothes. Because if you needed their clothes, you would have already bought them. Give me your purse. Mom Ruth has a big purse. It's a very big purse. Don't make her mad. There's a brick in the bottom. I'm just kidding. She only has one purse, girls. The American only has one purse. <gasps> How do you match your shoes? You don't. Huh? Mm. Bugat mang good. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a girl who goes to the store and she has a good bag on this arm and wants, oh, that one's pretty, so we'll buy that one too. That's what I'm talking about. Now look at me. Do you need that new purse when that old one's still working? Now, when Mom Ruth's purse wears out, now I got her that one for Christmas, didn't I? For your birthday or something? I picked the purse all by myself. Or did you help me? Oh, never mind. She picked it. I paid for it. Listen. Listen. We convince ourselves we need things we don't need. I'm amazed how many clothes Filipinos have. Way more than I do. Mom Ruth has more clothes than I do, but most of you ladies have more clothes than Mom Ruth. Well, this is popular preaching, ain't it? You know, do you know what the problem is? Listen. Oh, we're so poor. Well, you spent all your money on new clothes that you didn't need. Don't you love your pastor? And then we struggle in our marriage. And we struggle with stress. And we're mean to people. And we get angry and frustrated because we're stressed. Because we don't have money for food. Because we spent everything we had on things we didn't need. I'm going to make a statement. I don't have money because I'm an American. I have money because I control my spending. You know most missionaries are poor. Did you know that? Most missionaries struggle financially all the time. We don't. And there's three reasons, I think, for that. Number one, we're very careful how we spend. You say, Pastor Mike, I've seen you give other people money. Yep. Man, you can kaya nimo and so you must have lots of money. Actually, I give away far more money than I spend on myself. Way more. It's not even close. And some of you know that's true. But I get tired of this attitude of the American pastor doesn't understand. I do understand uh, covetousness and spending money that you don't need to spend. And that has nothing to do with your skin color or your country or your wages.
There is nothing wrong with spending the money you have. There's something very wrong with spending everything God gives you every time. Uh, let's just go ahead. Some of you have so many things you don't need in your house. Because one day it seemed like a good idea to buy it. And then you have to buy more cap and you have to buy the plastic divider things to sort all the things you don't need. Okay, let, let's talk practically. Julie was telling me how the guys walk around with the speakers. You ever seen those guys? And they walk up, eh, hey, for sale, you want a speaker? Oh, for me now, nindo kayo, diba? Say, takpila. And they say, how much are those things? 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, takpila ba? 4,000. They say, 4,000. You say, oh, ti kayan ako. Oh, pero pwede magutang. Takpila kung magutang. Oh, 6,000, 7,000 lang. Whoa! So here's the question we have to ask. Do I really need the nice speaker? Kinahang lang ba or wala? Wala. It'd be nice, but you don't need it. Are you gonna eat it? Huh? Can you wear it for clothing? Can you sleep under it at night? Then you don't need it! Okay, let's bring it a little closer to home. When you don't know how you're going to pay for your food, do you really need load? Unless you need it for your business or a situation like Brother JD's in Manila, that's different. But load is not a need. I figured, I was studying the Bible this past week and I figured something out. I never realized this before. Jesus never had load. Well, I say quarter part of the loan. Hey, here, let's take this a step further. You know, let me show you something. Do you know what's inside that shoe? What's an absolute sock? What's a pato? No, not the sock. What's inside the sock? A foot. Look. Not going to walk. Do you know why I have two feet? I don't make a lot So, if you have a lot of money, you can't get a lot of money. I never thought of that. You know, Jesus walked everywhere he went. People have estimated Jesus walked over 30,000 miles in his life. That's like 50,000, like 40 or 50,000 kilometers. Oh, Pastor Mike, it's hot. Do like Mom Irish. Get an umbrella and walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what those things are for. Man, God's smart. He gave you hands and feet so you could walk. Man. So the question is, do you really need it? Do you really need a new TV? Well, the old one broke. Do you need it? Okay, let's apply that one because that's good. Ang imong igaga or imong uncle or imong higala na dito sa Saudi or Canada or China and they send you 3,000 pesos and you go make a down payment on a new TV. I'm sorry, that's stupid. Now you owe 7,000 pesos in debt or more. I don't know what TVs cost. I've never bought one. Let's say it's, they cost 4,500. How much they cost? To TV. Sure, but if... You know these things, these flat screen things. 16,000. 16,000,000? You pay a 3,000 peso down payment. Now you're in debt for the next five years. What's wrong with us? Pobre should me Filipino lang. So I come down with that to go down to a butol ko. Do you really need a seventh pair of shoes? Ikapito. You got six, they still work. 
Oh, but they're so pretty. Do you really need them? Do you really need a fourth purse when the other three are right there lined up all nice in your living in your on your in your bedroom? Hold on. Do you really need a touch screen phone when you have an old fashioned style? Here we go. Let's apply it to where we live. Does your child really need three snacks and seven pieces of candy per day? Parents, what are you doing to your children's teeth? Pastor Mike, my own cardio and dentist, brought to Jude and delete my body of candy. Bad grammar, Jude, no. Delete my mind, yo. Watch now. Stay with me. Shh, 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 shh. Watch. Everybody starts laughing when the pastor preaches really close to home. Watch me now. Parents, snacks are nice, but snacks are special. You don't need them all the time. When I was a kid, you, you don't believe this, but I grew up in a family with eight kids. My dad drove a truck. We didn't eat special snacks much. Are you listening? Oh, I'm the non-Americano. Our house was falling apart. We were in a bad neighborhood. My neighbors got arrested and taken to jail for drugs. I watched it. The neighbors next to me had drugs too. They just didn't get caught. We have so many financial problems. And we blame it on so many things. But the biggest problem is we spend money we shouldn't spend. Look, have you ever met a rich Filipino? How'd they do that? Oh, Parulundon. No, not all of them. Not all of them. Sometimes it's an inheritance. Have you ever met a successful businessman? Let me tell you how to start a successful business. You don't spend anything extra. Magtigong tanan. Can I ask you a question? Do you ever feel like, now don't raise your hand on this, don't raise your hand. Do you ever feel like, God, I just, you're not taking care of our needs. You know, hold on. How can you say that to God when you spend money for things you don't need? Now, I'm not against buying nice things if you can afford it. But if it's your last 10 pesos, you are retarded. There's nothing wrong with having money and enjoying having money. But you will never have money as long as you keep spending all the money you have. There are many, so many problems in our lives that could be solved. If we would decide to think of money like God does. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give. Not have to have. Not have aron maka, maka gasto. Have to give. Money is a tool to help you get, it's not a tool, I'm sorry, it's not a tool to get you what you want. It is a tool to help you get what you need and then allow you to help others. O kung ikaw mag-recognize ng korta mao ang galamit doon, aron mag-atiman sa kinahanglan, dayon makatawang kukupan. When you learn that and you stop spending every peso, 
That's when God can actually start to bless you. Are you listening? The message tonight was frank. From an American to Filipinos. And I know that. And there's a big temptation for a Filipino to say, the American doesn't understand. But I want to ask you a question. Does he understand? And I'm preaching it now in the hopes that one day God will allow us to send preachers from our church, young men of God, Filipino, the science speaking preachers, who will go out and preach the same truth and take away that argument, well, he's an American. It's not about where you're from. It's not about how much money you have. It's about learning to control your spending. Because watch, if you spend 100% of 1,000 pesos per week, you will spend 100% of 10,000 pesos per week. Ang batas ang delit ma-change kung mag-stakwa ang porta. I want God to bless us, bless you financially. But we've got to control our spending. Kinaaman tan mag-control sa atong paggasto. It will solve a lot of problems in our lives. Whenever head bowed, every eye closed.